This refers to a paper that was published in Blood a couple of months ago. And what we did here is we tried to pick up on this idea of looking at uh, multiple risk factors in pediatric ALL, uh, integrating them, and also wherever possible using continuous data rather than dichotomous data. So much of the data that we've, uh, we have used in the past, looking at particularly MRD and white cell count and age, has always tended to dichotomize the data. So you were either MRD positive or you were negative, um, rather than looking at the continuum of data that is available. And of course, patients aren't simply just MRD positive or MRD negative. They might have undetectable MRD or they might have very high levels of MRD or um, somewhere in the middle. So therefore, we felt that using a threshold of, say, 0.01%, which was what was typically used to define MRD positive and negative patients, wasn't really uh, being used uh, efficiently enough in order to be able to make MRD a truly um, uh, useful prognostic marker. So what we did is we were using data from UCAL 2003, um, and we started off by trying to identify all the univariate risk factors. These were age, sex, white cell count, CNS disease, T cell status, MRD, slow early response, and also genetics. We then performed some multivariate model, modeling, and we identified that the key pro independent prognostic factors were MRD, and we, again, we were using this as a continuous variable, white cell count, again, we were using as a continuous variable, the presence of good risk cytogenetics, and the presence of high risk cytogenetics, just, so just four variables. So interestingly, age and T cell status weren't in the final risk model. Um, and in order to make sure that this was uh, a valid result, we added both variables back into the model to see if it improved the fit of the model, um, and it didn't. So we were confident that these four variables were uh, all that you needed in order to be able to predict uh, the risk of relapse in this cohort. So using this final model, we derived a uh, equation which is relatively simple, using um, weighted variables and calculated a risk score for each individual patient. So this is using the precise level of MRD, the presence of genetics, uh, good risk genetics and high risk genetics, and the precise white cell count. Um, and we were basically combining those four variables, all weighted into a single prognostic index. Now, the key thing is, is this prognostic index itself is a continuous variable. And so patients with a low level of the prognostic index had a low risk of relapse. And as the prognostic index increased, your level of uh, relapse increased significantly. So there was a direct correlation between the risk score or the prognostic index and your risk of relapse. So obviously we built this on um, data from UCAL 2003. Um, so it's not surprising that we could then use that um, risk score to define risk groups that had very uh, uh, different uh, event-free survival. So in order to validate this, we used three clinical trials from around Europe, uh, from the Dutch Children's Oncology Group, uh, the Nordic Country uh, Pediatric Oncology Group called NOFO, and also a group in Germany called COAL. So we combined data from three of these trials, totaling more than 2,300 cases, which was about the same size as the discovery cohort, UCAL 2003. And we used exactly the same equation to derive a prognostic index on this validation cohort and found exactly the same results. So the distribution of the prognostic index was similar. Its association with risk of relapse was very similar. And crucially, when we use the same thresholds in order to define four risk groups, low risk group, standard risk group, and intermediate and high, we found that the size of the group and the event-free survival of the patients in those group were exact, almost exactly the same. Therefore, this is an independent, validated prognostic index for predicting outcome uh, in uh, future clinical trials. And the reason why it, it takes a step forward in terms of delivering precision medicine is because A, you have a risk score for each individual patient, but because 
the prognostic index or the risk score is a continuous variable. You can design thresholds to determine the precise number of risk groups that you need for your clinical question. So if you need a very large low risk group, that's absolutely fine. Or if you need a very large high risk group, you can. So you can tailor the design of your clinical trial or your study um, and your, your risk groups based on what you need in order to be able to answer the clinical question um, that you're interested in answering. So it gives you much more flexibility in defining risk groups of a given size and a given outcome um, going forward. And crucially, now that it's been validated um, in an independent contemporary trial, you can use this equation going forward uh, in, in other studies. And we hope that this will be used uh, and picked up by, by groups. Um, and we're now looking at ways of actively using this in future clinical trials.